Hello everyone, my name is Vsevolod Nikitin. I'm the pre-sales and after-sales director at MedVision Europe. In this video, we would like to show you our highly realistic patient simulator, Leonardo High Fidelity. One of the most important features of MedVision patient simulators is working with real devices and mechanical ventilators will see Leonardo High Fidelity and other simulators as real patients and will act accordingly. You can set different parameters and introduce complications for a complete respiratory training, including scenarios where we see complications um, after COVID infection. Let's begin our demo of Leonardo High Fidelity simulator in our classic approach from head to toes. Let's begin with the head, and you can see here we have the highly realistic head. You can see pigmentation, uh, pores, blemishes, uh, wrinkles, eyebrows, hair, so everything looks very realistic. Mm -hmm. The jaw, we get a lot of compliments on the jaw, is nice and soft. The jaw thrust and chin lift maneuvers are very realistic feeling as well. Also, the head is nice and heavy, as, a, as it should be, as a real one, and you can see that the neck is soft and flexible, and you can tilt or rotate Leonardo's head, and this enables training, for example, with uh, extrication when you're putting a collar on here, or many other different kinds of training here. If we look closely here, we can see the little holes where the uh, water for secretion would be coming from, and as you can see, they are very small, and uh, when the water is coming through, it doesn't really look artificial. Leo has two tanks inside, one for secretion and one for fake blood. Here on Leo we can see tears, secretion from the ears, mouth secretion, secretion from the nose, sweating on the forehead, and urination. light reflex in the eyes. And also, uh, eyes are completely programmable and interactive, so for example, you can have them open, closed, uh, half open, you can configure the blinking speed, uh, and for example, introduce parameters like anisocrea or uh, different size of pupils. Let's have a look at Leonardo's intubation and try all the difficult airway complications that we have here. And here we have pharyngeal obstruction. and laryngospasm. Let's have a look at them both. And if we introduce also the tongue edema, yep, we're gonna have a very difficult airway for sure. Let's have a look at Leonardo's soft tongue and we have two settings here for tongue edema, 50% uh, swelling, there it is, it's nice and soft, and 100% swelling. And when we're switching from 50 to 100%, we've got to give it a few seconds to deflate and then inflate again. And what's nice about it is that it's nice and soft, um, and you can try and go around it, for example, like this. And let's have a closer look at Leonardo's soft jaw. Get a lot of compliments on it. So here's the jaw thrust with a sensor, and it's nice and soft and has a complete range of mobility and even has realistic under jaw uh, anatomy so that you can do various maneuvers. Leonardo's lock jaw. There it is and it's pretty strong. Before intubation we always recommend to use the included lubricant and you can also prepare this yourself as this is a mix of glycerine and water. And Leonardo patient sim will take tubes from seven to eight. Now let's have a look at how intubation procedure looks like with Leonardo and how he registers the tube position, if it's esophageal intubation or tracheal intubation. So here we can see tracheal intubation being registered. And here's our esophageal intubation. In case of esophageal intubation, we will see stomach distension. And in case of tracheal intubation, we will see uh, chest rise and fall. And it will depend if it's unilateral or bilateral, depending on the introduced parameters. Leo can be ventilated with a mechanical ventilator or a BVM like we do in this case. We would like to show you Leonardo's chest rise and fall. 
I think it looks very <laughs> realistic and looks rather biological than mechanical. When ventilating Leo, you can see the introduced oxygen being registered in the software in the bottom left corner. We took special care to make sure chest compressions feel natural rather than mechanical, and the motion is uniform and not hinged. Chest compressions produce ECG artifacts and realistic waveforms. Leo supports most types of supraglottic devices, including LMAs, ET tubes, size 6 to 8, anti tubes, and combi tubes. We try to minimize or simplify use of consumables with smart solutions in order to make it easy and effective for your daily training workflow. For cricothyrotomy, we use soft double sided sticky tape that is an inexpensive and effective solution. After you roll up the neck skin, carefully remove the cricoid. Uh, more and less prominent ones are included. Apply the tape and cut to a fitting length for a proper seal. Put the cricoid back on, first sliding it in at the bottom, and then pressing on the top part until it clicks into place. After making a puncture or an incision, you can simply rotate the neck piece or flip it for more usage. One of Leonardo's coolest features is tension pneumothorax decompression. It can be performed on both sides up to 500 times with no consumables <laughs> and no visible damage. Realistic anatomy and palpable ribs make it easy to find the right spot for puncture. <laughs> On the side there is a removable hemothorax slash hydrothorax pad with hard plastic ribs and behind it there is a cavity for chest tube insertion. Auscultation is performed with our smart scope adapter which has a soft flexible rubber part so you can use your own stethoscope. Leo has 5 cardiac points, 5 lung anterior points, 4 bowel points and 6 lung posterior points. You can use real ECG stickers with Leonardo and just stick them on the skin and we've even tested leaving the stickers on for 2 weeks and they left no visible marks after we removed them. Under Leo's skin, there are sensors for correct electrode placement, and it will show this in the action log. For defibrillation, we provide these training pads, or we can adapt real ones for your training needs. The training ones have the gel pad material that can be removed and washed with water to be reused later. And naturally, there are sensors for correct electrode placement. SpO2 monitoring is supported with a real pulse eximeter and there is a special port on our adapter for it. A closer look at the adapter box, it has two sides, one for patient, one for defib connections, and on the faceplate uh, there are connections for real ECG electrodes. Flipping it over to the side indicated as patient, here we have the defibrillator pads connector. Align the little plastic rail with the indentation on the port. Pull gently to remove. Also here we have our ECG cable connector, same. Align the rail and pull gently to remove. And the last one is the SpO2 probe connector that only goes in one way. On the side indicated as defibrillator, we have the pacing port that connects to a defib. A port for connecting a defibrillator itself. And an SpO2 port for the cable that goes to the real patient monitor. In his right arm, Leo has a drug recognition port that uses RFID tags that can also be personalized, and the port measures the amount and speed of medication injected. An IV arm for Leonardo can also be purchased.
a proximal tibia intraosseous access with a removable hard plastic insert, also a consumable that can be used multiple times. Inside it, there is a hard cured foam material that imitates bone structures so that it's realistic to penetrate, with a little ball of fake blood underneath that will stain the needle. You can write, paint, use whiteboard markers and alcohol containing markers, pencils and even glue on Leonardo. Everything will wipe off easily, making it the easiest to cure for a patient sim and prolonging his good looks. You can even use alcohol containing solutions to disinfect the skin. Skin on a patient simulator has never been so easy to maintain. Not only is it stain resistant, it is also very stretchable and durable, hiding puncture marks and making it soft to the touch, just like real skin. Here you can see me wiping off glue, and this is important because this means you can glue uh, bone fragments onto Leonardo's and various attachable pads to simulate burns, to simulate you know little particles of dust on the skin and protruding uh, fractured bones as well. Leonardo has realistic flexibility in all of his joints, and we at MedVision like to bring attention to detail, which you can see in actual kneecaps, soft hands and fingers, skeleton structure, mushy muscles, palpable ribs and soft skin. This is a case where it's best to see for yourself in a live demo. You can have Leo sit, put his arms behind his head, raise his knees, do prone position ventilation and more. One of our valued clients wanted to simulate a patient having a stroke in a toilet. Such a realistic and creative scenario serves as an example of your creative possibilities with Leonardo High Fidelity Patient Simulator by MedVision. Let's have a closer look at our software, so let's have a look at them one by one. First of all, automated scenarios. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, uh, you have a selection of these where you have to perform certain actions to get to a certain outcome, or not perform actions, and then you would get a different outcome naturally. So here we have a description of scenario, name, age, gender, height, and weight, a little icon to represent the patient, as you can see they're all very different. Uh, here on the right side we have a list of actions with these little arrows to expand if you want to have a closer look at the scenario before launching it. And we have a case history, a description of the topic, learning objectives, and our media. So let me find something else. So for example here we have a chest x-ray, an ALS protocol algorithm, and an MRI for example. Manual mode, again a selection of scenarios where you get your uh, preset, the first condition, and then from, from that you have to uh, improvise. So here we have also everything is the same, some more icons, and of course some more media. Naturally you can create your own scenarios uh, and upload pictures, uh, text files, etc. More importantly here we have our themes and themes, with themes we give you a few examples of how they're supposed to look like. However, this is uh, what we want our clients to experiment with. So this is a hybrid between a manual and an automated scenario. So uh, let me show you. For example, here I have acute poisonings, uh, organophosphate poisonings and some other ones, uh, breathing patterns, hemorrhagic shock, four classes, healthy patients, male and female, and heart rhythm disturbances. I'm gonna talk about this a little later. A tab with our students. So here we have a list of groups and a list of students. So here we have group A and group B. Uh, what you can do is you can create another group, for example, let me create group C. And in group C, I can create some students. So for example, John Smith, oh, that's the first name, John, last name, Smith, group C. There we go. However, when creating students and conducting training, for example, you might not want to save all the statistics into one person's specific account. So what you do is you create a group and you call it a group C. So here we now have a group C under the list of students. So this make it makes it a group training and the statistics and debriefing files will be recorded under this name. However, we can go even further with this. We can call it group C and then say John, Jenny, and Alex. So we're specifying it a little further than that. Debriefing. In debriefing is where we have our debriefing files and connections. Connections tab uh, shows you all of the elements of the system. If they are connected in real time and it shows the battery charge percentage here as well. If you click on the patient icon, you will see the version of the software right here. And exit. By pressing exit, you get to the user selection screen. 
I have a demo version here, so I can just press accept, and here you can also uh, choose different languages. And at the bottom here, we have our instructor software version, also an important parameter. So let's launch a healthy patient theme uh, on Leonardo High Fidelity. So here, you type in your username and password and press accept. Select themes, select healthy patient, the preset that you want to launch first, and you press start. This will offer you to change parameters before you want to start. Press start, and there we go. This is what you see after you launch a scenario. Here I have a healthy patient launched, and the screen is broken down into three sections. Let's have a look at them one by one. So section number one is you, where you choose your condition. Uh, for example, here I can choose between a male and a female patient, and um, when I choose, when I highlight the female patient in this case, after I press activate, the parameters are going to change. However, uh, what I can also do is before switching, I can press on the parameter value and I can customize it even further. For example, if after constructing this scenario, uh, I still want a little more flexibility, I can have it here, for example. And after this, as you can see, these are all here. I press activate and they will all be here on the uh, main control screen. So I'm going to go back to mail. Uh, this here in the central section is our patient simulator controls. So let's have a look at these icons one by one. And here we also have sensors. I'll be talking about them in a second. So first of all, patient words, uh, patient speech. You can choose specific uh, phrases. You can record your own and upload them. You can set them on repeat and you can configure the volume. Here, if you scroll a little further, you can see uh, mild coughing, severe coughing, um, difficult breathing, vomiting, pain moans. So you have these kinds of sounds here as well. Looking at the icons, let's start with the brain icon. Here uh, we have trismus. And as you can see in the action log, the condition changes as well. And we have convulsions, which can be tonic or clonic. So I'm going to turn them off now. Next up is the airway icon. So pressing this. Here we have tongue edema, 0%, 50%, and 100%. Tongue fallback, pharyngeal obstruction, and laryngospasm. Lungs, uh, we have our presets here. So this can be a left side attention pneumothorax or right sided. And if you see, if I go back, here is a red circle indicating that something is wrong with the lungs in the chest area. After the pneumothorax is decompressed, it's going to go back to normal here. Your sliders for resistance, four steps, and compliance. So these sliders will also change Leonardo's breathing to unilateral or bilateral chest rise and fall. One more thing to note in the airway is the tongue fallback. If you turn this on, uh, if you enable it, this is a uh, more or less virtual feature. So when it's on, the patient stops breathing. You can see the respiratory rate drop to zero. Uh, you can see the red indicator in the neck area. So what you have to do is you have to tilt the head of the patient back and this icon will light up in blue. So th then this complication will be dealt with. The bleeding icon, here we have bleeding for left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, and torso. So for torso bleeding, what we usually do is you take the, the wound pad or the arm or for the leg and you lay it flat on the chest. Uh, and this here is where you control this then. Eyes tab, here we can control eyes together or individually. And this is done with this little lock here in between them. So you will encounter these locks um, all over the software in various places. So right eye or left eye, you can choose the eyelid position closed or half open. Uh, you can choose the blinking rate, the pupil size, um, eyelid position, for example, open. Uh, here the pupil is dilated and here it is going to be constricted. So you can see it displayed here. And you can turn on and off the uh, reaction to light and blinking here as well. The heart icon contains pulses, and here is yet another lock. When you press it, you can control them all simultaneously. If you disconnect the lock, you can do them one by one like this. And cyanosis setting is also here. Uh, when you turn on cyanosis, you can see the blue indicators here. We have a, a peripheral cyanosis and also central in nasal labial triangle will be present here on the simulator as well. In auscultation menu, a very important setting right here is to turn off the compressor. 
if you want a higher fidelity of the sound without interruptions. Uh, heart, you can choose a heart sound from one of these. Uh, you can choose lungs, again, uh, a lock. You can choose them bilateral or you can choose them unilateral, like this. And bowel sounds here as well, diarrhea, constipation, paralytic ileus, for example. Korkov value setting. However, if you go into more sounds, it opens up a special menu where you can configure each point individually. So, for example, for heart sounds, uh, you can control mitral valve, aortic valve, pulmonary valve, tricuspid valve, and herbs point. And setting different sounds here, you can create your own pathologies and configuring their volume as well. And then you just press activate, and there you go, your custom sound is now playing. And the last icon here is secretion, and you can see all of the secretion uh, settings here, and urination uh, settings right there. So all of these settings are optimized for touch input and mouse input alike. Uh, if you're operating with your <laughs> fingers, it makes it very easy with these big sliders, and uh, the interface is all very responsive and very fluent. Another feature you can do is when you're using touch input, you can long press on an icon to have it fixed down here so you can have two of them open at the same time. Or if you're operating with a mouse, you have to press the mouse wheel button to fix it down here. Looking at the uh, section on the right here, we have the patient monitor controls, we have the forecasting screen, and at the bottom we have tabs of action log, AED controls, CPR, commenting, uh, in the filter to see only patient condition changes. So let's uh, have a look at them one by one. Uh, here is the patient monitor control screen. Uh, if you press here in the middle, if you do a long press or you press the mouse wheel button here, uh, you can configure the uh, bedside monitor row count or choose a preset right here, which I'm going to do. So as you can see, the lines changed. If I press on the number here, I can configure the number using a slider, or I can press the number here and set what I want it to be. Uh, delay, uh, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and so on. Transition time, same. And you can choose the function, how the transition is going to look like, and you press apply. So for example, here on the forecasting screen, if I press, um, if I change the heart rate, for example, to zero, it's going to happen in 30 seconds immediately. You can see it's dropping down here. So this tells you what it's going to look like in one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And this is the y-axis uh, parameter right here. In the patient monitor control section, if you press on the ECG here, you can choose a rhythm from a library. So with a systole at the bottom, and since rhythm at the top, you can choose between different rhythms, and then you can further configure them, for example, choosing a lead, uh, setting a heart rate, uh, extra systoles, frequency, electrical, muscular, EMD, PEA, and you can choose the, again, delay, transition time, and function, and you press apply right there. At the bottom here, we have our tabs. The action log will display all the changes done to a patient simulator, and you can see they have these little icons next to them, which makes it very easy to find these actions in the debriefing, which I'm going to be showing a little later. AED controls, so running rhythm, waiting rhythm, choose one, and uh, choose uh, the quantity of shocks, the energy uh, to go to this rhythm here, and for pacemaker, you can choose the current right here. CPR. Now, uh, if you press this little arrow here, it opens up a timeline. So let me open up a virtual patient simulator here. If I go to CPR and I start a session, you can see here the compression depth. You can see the speed right here, ventilation volume and number of uh, correct ventilations shock and correct arm placement. So after our CPR session is done, we can do uh, ventilation. You can see the administered volume right here. And we can shock. 150 joules, uh, shown both here and on the timeline. Timeline can also be scrolled like this. It's gonna show you the pause length. We can also comment 
Uh, for example, there are some procedures which are not registered automatically, for example, like uh, intramuscular injections, IM, so you can comment them here like this, or central catheter, for, for example. Up at the top here, you have your play, pause, and stop buttons. You can restart your scenario, and you press this button to speak for Leonardo. So you can communicate with your students by Leonardo's speech. What you can also do is you can press the space bar on your keyboard to uh, pause the session. And I'm going to stop this now, and I'm going to go to debriefing now. So here is our debriefing file. Uh, and here you can see our action log. On the timeline, you can see the little icons I was talking about before. So for example, auscultation icons right here, uh, pulse change icons here, and etc. etc. So it's easy to find where you want to go like this. So then you just press play, and if you recorded a video, it would be here. And this is your patient monitor uh, display. The list of action tabs is reserved for automatic scenarios. Here you can change lines to see CPR, and you can zoom in on it a little bit. And you can see on the timeline, I'm gonna to scroll to where I've done the CPR. There it is, there's our session right here. Zoom out. If I go to description here, you can see the file uh, data. And if you go to CPR, now you're going to see CPR overall score. Um, here you can see compression assessment, ventilation, fibrillation, uh, the only important thing uh, here that you can press is the assessment time, and then you choose uh, the assessment time at the bottom right here, like this. And you can see as the parameter changes when I choose a different timeline here. Scenario constructor. I'm going to open a file. So for example, I want to go with a theme here. And for the themes, I'm going to choose a hemorrhagic shock. There we go. So the scenario constructor is very visualized. You just press add new state here, and you can move them around like this. You can draw lines between them for triggers. You can have multiple triggers, of course, to go from one state to another. Uh, to configure a state, you press the little pencil icon right here. Uh, and what's nice about it is that it is exactly as it is in the software. So uh, you press on an eyes uh, icon, there is the eye controls, you press on the heart icon, um, and the rest. If, for example, you choose a rhythm, all, all the other parameters are going to change as well. As you can see, I have selected a systole here, and there is a number of parameters that has changed as well. So state name, you can... Uh, uh, change the name, you can give it a short description and load additional data. So here you can select who you want it to be, if it is a picture, if it is a uh, MRI scan or something else, or if it is a text document and you upload it here. And at the bottom here you can choose to transfer to the next state and the transition time will be for example 10 seconds and the transition curve I want to be abrupt. So uh, there we go. So the rest is exactly as you would find in some office programs that we're used to. New file, open file, save, save as. Actions gives you a library of actions you have here, and you can filter them by the category right here, or you can create a new action yourself. Scenario info to change the scenario briefing. So you can change the scenario name, group name, description, patient data with a little picture you can upload here, case history, learning objectives and uploading additional data right here, pressing a plus icon, you can choose what you want it to be, a text or an image. And in configuration, you can select languages uh, and change if you want uh, CO2 to be uh, MMHD or KPA. Okay. And you have your zoom slider here. And what I like about this is it can be very nice and visualized and you can spread them out like this to help with your process right there. So you can see our triggers right here. You can see the 10 seconds transition time to this state. Uh, if, for example, a trigger is not performed, uh, let me try and show you some other scenarios we have in here. So here you can see a scenario called anaphylaxis. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can see the transition times. Uh, you can see the time triggers. You can see action triggers and going from one condition to another. So it's all very nice and visualized here. 
In ECG Editor, we give users the ability to change ECG rhythm. So after launching the ECG Editor software, you can select a part and you can configure it to what you want it to be. You can even go to unrealistic parameters here. So it is very flexible and you can also see your um, points, your coordinates right here if you want to check. Uh, here is a series of them, how it's going to look like. You can see right here. Um, you can test how it's going to look like and settings to choose the language. For additional training on how to operate this module, please contact MedVision uh, or our local MedVision representation. To charge your Leonardo, grab the connector and it has two parts that are different size and you have to align them with the receiving end. Twist it until it locks, pull the lever, remove it and of course the green LED signifies that Leonardo is on and operational. This concludes our video about our highly realistic patient simulator Leonardo. If you would like to see other videos about the broad portfolio of MedVision's patient simulators, for example, Pediatric Arthur or Neonatal Mia, uh, please go to our website, YouTube channel and Instagram, uh, or book a live demo and visit our showroom in many countries where we have uh, our offices. We'll be happy to see you and see you in a demo. Thank you. Bye-bye.